So we have this, uh, uh, this general setup that I have x. So I'm thinking of this x as being a, a Mori fiber space over a point. So x over a point is a, itself a Fano. And uh, this will be a threefold, except that for a lot of the arguments, it will be a cubic surface. Because I'll, I'll, simpl I'll simplify the arguments. Right, and we suppose that x is birational to some uh, y over s. So this is a general, this is a, a general Murray fiber space. So the statement of rigidity is that uh, every such every such phi um, the existence of any such phi implies that y is isomorphic to x. Right? So I haven't I haven't stated enough conditions here yet for this to be to be the correct theorem, but let me say the strategy for proving it. So the strategy will be um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to always assume that this has rho equals 1 and that this one also has rho equals 1. And that's part of the definition of Murray fiber space. So the, the strategy is that uh, if phi is not an isomorphism, then um, the linear system defining phi has a bad singularity. Right? So let me let me let me say what I mean by this. So I take H. It, what 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 I want to do is take uh, L, uh, uh, a very ample. Linear system on Y, and take uh, so I'm going to write this crazy thing phi minus one push push forward of L. So this is the the birational transform of L on X. I'm going to call this H. Yes, and so, uh, uh, so now I've got this H is in some projective space, <coughs> and so he's defined by an embedding in there. That, that's what some very ample system means. I don't care what which one it is. Yes, and then I think of this as a linear system here. So I take the corresponding linear system without base part, w without base components. So this H is contained in. Uh, some m k x, right? So this is just the assumption that this is rho equals one. So in our, in our present case, let's have m a where a is minus k x, right? So here I'm assuming, uh, you know, I mean, in, in 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 the cases I'm working with, the class group of x is z times a where A is minus Kx, example. So putting minus here, you always, always make mistakes. So that's the reason for introducing this. So, so this is for some m. And this bad singularity means that Kx plus 1 over m h is not canonical. Yes, and so, uh, you, you, you know, I, this, is a, this is a very simple notion. It means there is, 
it means that I have a linear system here, H. And so I should be measuring him as a multiple of the canonical system. And then he has a singularity here which is worse than canonical. It breaks some kind of a junction. So, so let, me, let, let me try and say this slightly more precisely. So uh, uh, this means that, um, so what do I want to say? Uh, if, I, if I write W to X, a resolution of singularities, right, I have KW is KX. I'm not, I'm not bothering to write F upper star plus uh, sigma AIEI. These AI in Q and AI positive. So because this is just the definition of terminal singularities of X. Right? And then I can write H twiddles. So H twiddles is just the same linear system on W. So here by now I've got this W and I can assume that him mapping to him, him mapping to Y is a morphism. And so this H twiddles here is just, I blow up the base points of the linear system with curly H until there are no base points left, and then I pull him back and then I take only the part that's really moving up there. So this is the mobile transform. So this is H and then minus some MIEI. Right? So these are the discrepancies. These are the coefficients appearing in the Jacobian uh, matrix, the uh, Jacobian determinants. Of, of the map, or whatever this map is, yes? And these here are the multiplicities of the linear system H at the base, the base uh, parts EI, right? And uh, not canonical here means that uh, there exists an I with one of these two big, MI. Uh, so let me call that N, greater than NAI. So that if I do kx, if I do kw plus 1 over, so, so this guy here is numerically 0, right? Because h, I took h to be an n times a, so this is minus a plus, this is minus a plus n over n times a, numerically. Yeah, so this is something which is numerically zero, and then I, I'm, I'm going to arrange that up, when I take him upstairs, one, one over n h twiddles, this is uh, some exceptional devices, and at least one. This is a linear combination, some of these. Uh, uh, N A I minus, sorry, A I minus M I over N. Right, at least one has coefficients less than zero. Right, so, so this, K, this, this guy, Kx plus 1 over n, is numerically trivial, and then when I lift him up there, he's some bunch of exceptional devices, some of which may be positive, I can't help that. Maybe I've done a non-minimal resolution, but uh, at least one of them is strictly negative, and that means that uh, uh, this linear system can never be effective. Right, Any multi no multiple of this linear system can be effective. So, so this guy here, we're thinking of being something which... Uh, Maybe if I take a multiple of n, he'll be linearly equivalent to zero, and then the singularity there destroys. So, so you know, for example, this could be an ordinary non-singular case. If, if, if the x was an ordinary non-singular k3 surface, this means, and I took an element in the linear system minus k, I'd have a k3 surface, right? If I have a, if 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 I had kx plus that k3 surface is not canonical, it means that. I can make a linear system there, every element of which has a, a non-rational singularity. Right? So I'm, I'm, I can... So um, this is called NFI. So Nertha Fano Vyskovsky. Uh, 
And so Noether, Noether is there because uh, he, he, uh, he, he proved a little, uh, uh, an initial statement about birational maps of P2, saying that if I've got a linear system on P2 that's not an isomorphism, then at least one of the base points has to have multiplicity one-third of the... Uh, of the degree of the curves. Farno, Farno studied this in much more generality, in, in particular this uh, Manny-Niskovsky paper, uh, uh, Farno had this, uh, this idea here. So Iskovsky did this completely generally and systematically in many, many cases. Right. So there's a statement there, and I, unfortunately I'm not, not being able to, uh, you know, during the tea break I was not able to uh, reconstruct a proper proof. I don't think it's very difficult. Uh, I've got the x and I've got the y. We assume it's not isomorphic, right? And so I take the, the linear system L here is something on H, something uh, which is uh, pulled back from S plus a multiple of minus ky, right? So this y is a fiber space, a Mori fiber space over, over S. And so it's, uh, his, canonic, his, his uh, divisor class group is generated by minus ky, which is relative, and then as relative row is one, and then everything else is a multiple coming back, coming from S, right? So, so L is that, and H, right? So here I have H and KS, KX. Here I have L and KY. And then I'm going to calculate, I'm going to, I'm going to take some guy which is biras uh, bi with a, a birational with a morphism to both, and I'm going to calculate discrepancies in both directions. So proof calculate discrepancies uh, in two different ways. Right. So this, uh, so, 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 so the only point here is that uh, where uh, uh, some, something here about why being Fano means that if I do this if I do this, kx plus 1 over n h, this must have a singularity which breaks the potential for this guy to be effective. So when I resolve the singularities, I'm subtracting off something from h, and then he can't be effective. So I'm, I'm afraid I can't give you the correct proof because I was not able to uh, 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 remember it. During the break, it's uh, you know this is in several papers of Iskowski and it's in several other papers, but it's not immediately accessible in this book. <clears throat> anyway, now I'm I'm explaining really the strategy. So so this is a main point here. So where we're going to this is the thing that the Russians call the method of maximal multiplicity. Right, so we uh, so we're going to we're going to, uh, in this linear system H. There must be some point there which is very singular. There must be some one of these coefficients here M I must be very must be big compared to everything else. So then uh, the strategy goes on. Uh, so. So we're going to consider we're going to consider all possible maximal centers. Right. So there's some subtleties about what we mean by maximal centers. Whether we mean some divisor EI on a model or the valuation associated with the model. So the way we t the way we treat it finally when we have it correctly done is. Uh, we think of these as being uh, Murray extremal extractions. 
Right? So this is the best type. Sorry? So it means that uh, here I've got my x. So the x has his kx and his h. And what we find is y there, which is uh, maybe not so good to use the same letter. Maybe I'm going to write x1 here. And so this is a Murray contraction, a, a, a row x1 over x equals 1 extraction of a divisor. Right, with, with exceptional divisor, E, and uh, this, um, so down here I have Kx plus 1 over N, H is numerically trivial, and here I have, when I take it up here, I have Kx1, Kx1 plus 1 over N of H1, so I do, I, H1 is, this h pulled back there w w minus whatever multiplicity of h he has. This is negative. <coughs> yes? So with these, we're going to either, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to do two different things. And uh, uh, so, so either exclusion or untwisting. So this means derive a contradiction. So in other words, the, uh, this, this uh, Nersefano Iskowski inequality said that there has to be some maximal center we, we assume what, we make an assumption of what the maximal center is, and we get a contradiction. And that means that so the map can't, couldn't have existed. Or we have an untwisting. And that means we use this uh, x1 to x, the strong, strong version of the maximal center. to uh, find a birational involution of x. Right? And so this is, uh, this is the thing I sketched in the first lecture in one particular case. So I do x goes to x1, and then I, I go down to this, uh, I can't remember what I was calling him, but z. Right? So this is the anti-canonical. So, 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 so remember, the row of x was 1. I make this, this is a, a, a Mori extreme extraction, so row of x1 is 2. It's generated by, generated by uh, the pullback of the canonical class of x, minus the canonical class of x, and this exceptional divisor e here. Right? And so, uh, in, the, in the case I was doing earlier, e was this uh, weighted, plane, 1a, r minus a, right? And this was uh, calculating anti-canonical ring. Uh, r x1 minus kx1, right? So this was minus, this was in terms of in terms of minus kx equals a. This was r. This is contained in r of... Okay. This is r of x1 and then this a minus 1 over r of e. <coughs> right, and where z has a biregular involution. Okay, so uh, so I'm not going to be able to run this program unless I make more assumptions about x. So later on, I'll have to assume that x is actually one of our one of our chosen uh, general 95 
hypersurfaces in this one of these 95 families, and that E is one of those, uh, one of those points about which we know Kalmata's theorem. Right. And uh, so what does untwisting mean? So untwisting means that... Uh, so, so now I've got this x to y. This is assumed to exist. This is the thing I assume to exist. And so here I... So, so if I do this, I have an involution here, and then I can complete this diagram x1 plus down to x plus, which is isomorphic to x. Right? And so this map here... I is going to be called is I sub E, right? So I do this X. I, I imagine imagine this map uh, this map X to Y was originally given, and then I do X, and then so I uh, imagine that I do X first. First of all, I pre-multiply by this I this involution, and then I do. Uh, Phi, to, phi goes to E. Right, so I could do I E composed with Phi. It's a different map from X to Y. And I want to say that this has has smaller degree than Phi. So uh, I think of the original the original x to y as being some sort of complicated wound up thing. And then I say, I found a way of pre-composing pre this map by some, uh, by some little twist here that decreases the degree. Right? So at the end, so assuming, assuming that I, you know, I, try to, I try it again, I apply the same method now to this slightly simplified map. So, so, so this is this, this map here is a partly untwisted guy, so eventually, so I can assume by induction that this phi so assume by induction that I phi I E composed with phi is, uh, you know, some I1 composed with I2 composed with, composed with In, right, where uh, I, I sub J are involutions of X constructed. In the same way, right? Then phi is I E composed with I one, I N, and we're home. And y equals x uh, is y is isomorphic to x. Yes. So. So this uh, this exclusion is the uh, is sort of uh, is you know unfortunately this is not one argument there are many different there are several different arguments and we have to so uh, so so exclusion so there 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 so this breaks up into many parts. And it's basically saying, so one, one method of argument is numeric. So, uh, 
uh, if I, I've, got, I've got this linear system H with a bad singular locus, uh, a, bad, uh, a bad with a singularity of large multiplicity. So you can imagine, uh, on the other hand, H is M times Kx minus M times Kx. And so I can calculate H to the N. H, this H is a linear system without fixed part. So I can calculate this H, H squared or H cubed. So I could do this H squared times minus Kx or H cubed. These are numbers. These are just numbers. And on the other hand, uh, this, this, uh, this is, this is a, a, Carti a Q Cartier divisor times some number, this, this H squared. This H squared represents the, uh, because this is a, a linear system without fixed part, this is a, the self-intersection of a linear system. So this is a, 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 a co-dimension co -dimension two cycle, a union of curves of, of multiplicity of, of, K, of Kx. And this is just the degree of those curves. Right? On the other hand, if there's large multiplicity, if I have singularity of large multiplicity, then uh, the large multiplicity implies this is big. Right? And so I get some, so I get so, some sort of basically complicated uh, uh, self-intersection calculation that says where assuming I've got a, a, singular, a singularity of large multiplicity, and at the same time, this, so therefore this number must be very big. On the other hand, it can't be any bigger than, uh, than m, 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 m cubed, h cubed, and that's sometimes a contradiction. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sketching this. Uh, this, is a, this is a tricky argument. Uh, the original aiskovsky manin Uh, mostly, mostly use this kind of argument of numerical argument. It, it, it's this. Is, uh, I'm I'm completely battleizing this. I'm completely uh, uh, oversimplifying. Right. So anyway. Uh, so the other, the other, the, there's, a, there's a com another completely separate method, which is Mori theoretic. Which is, and the Mori theoretic method is, try to carry out this program. Right? So I have, I have a variety X, I, I know how to make an X, a, a blow up of it X1. Right? So this is a variety with row, row x1 equals 2. And so on the x1, I can start playing this thing that I'm going to describe later called a two-ray game. And then at some point, we find that there's a contraction that we have to make, and it takes us outside of the Murray category. And that's contradiction. So this is the thing called bad links. We have, to use, we have to use these different methods in slightly different contexts, many different cases. So there are many, many different arguments here, and I'm, and I'm, not, trying to, uh, I'm not trying to get it all correct. So let me, let me just... Uh, so our, 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 our paper in this book uh, starts working with the case of a, a cubic surface. And, uh, you know, it's sort of... Rather than try to oversimplify a very, very complicated argument, uh, it's better to work with this. So let's do the case of a, uh, a cubic surface, non-singular cubic surface, so S3 in P3 with row equals one. Right. And so now I'm, con I'm, uh, I'm not, I've, I've, I, I'm sort of lo slightly lost the, uh, the original assumption that we're working over, over the complex field. So 
So what I mean by this is S is a cubic surface over a field K, non-closed. And I'm assuming that pick of S over, over K is over, maybe, maybe I use over a field K, little k. Right, I want to say that this is z, z times minus Ks. Okay, so example, if I take, if I take F3 and G3, two general cubic, right, and then I, I write down lambda F3 plus G3, so this is, uh, this is a cu obviously a cubic polynomial, but it's a cubic polynomial with coefficients in C of lambda. Yes, and so, um, you know, you can think of this, you can think of this as a cubic, you can think of this cubic surface as being contained in the blow-up of nice, non nice curve C3. Uh, uh, sorry, F3 and sec G3 in P3. So I, so I do this, I, I do this blow up P3 twiddles in this curve, and then inside there I've got this curve S, this surface S, which is lambda F3 plus G3. Right, and this is a, this is an ample, this is a, this is a very ample divisor on the P3. I'm this is an ample divisor on the P3. Right, so this guy has, this guy has uh, rho equals, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I'm talking nonsense. So I've got this P3 blown up here, and this is mapping over, fibered over P1, and the fiber here, the general, P1 is just P1 of lambda. Right, and the, the general fiber here is this surface S lambda. Right, and uh, so this guy here has Picard number, uh, this Picard group of rank 2, and so he's fibered over P1, and the fibers must have Picard group of rank 1. So let's assume that uh, let phi from S lambda. So, so I'm just going to call this S now. This was, uh, I, I've got this uh, some S having, having this property. So if I've got S maps to some Y, which is a Mori fiber space, uh, Right. Then the uh, the Nerthofano inequalities say that there exists a linear system H in uh, S on S. So the H is necessarily because because I'm making this assumption. This H is necessarily in. So let me let me say minus M. Uh, minus n times h, uh, uh, minus n times k. Singularity of multiplicity uh, m, singular points, singular points of multiplicity m greater than n. Right. So, so the thing I'm saying, the thing I'm saying here is I have uh, on S, I have. Uh, Ks, that's the guy who's negative, plus 1 over n times h. Right, so that's the guy which is, so this is numerically trivial. Right, and there's a, there's a blow up, s1 to s. 
of a zero of a of a point. So point means a zero dimensional irreducible scheme. Zero dimensional irreducible scheme over the field K with um, so then KS1 is uh, KS plus E. So, you know, the thing I have in mind here is that this is one point or maybe two, point, two conjugate points over the field, or maybe more, but only one or two is possible, right? And then here, I've got this thing which is a union of minus one curves. So again, it's either one minus one curve or it's two, two or more that are conjugate over the field. Yes? And uh, H, the linear system H goes to this uh, H1, which is H mi minus, and then this is M times E, and the M has to be greater than that. Yes? So this is the not final inequality. It's just saying that there the must be a linear system there if I have a map which is not an isomorphism. This is birational but not isomorphic. Right? Then there's a bad singularity. Then there's a linear system having a, a bad singularity. So if I have this, then, then the claim claim, so this is the thing that's exclusion, the exclusion claim is that the, uh, the degree of p is 1 or 2. Yes, because, uh, so, you know, this surface, I've got this surface S here, and it has pick z. Yes, and the, uh, the, it's got the, gen the generator. If I take the generator, that's this A minus KS. So generator has A cubed equals, uh, A squared equals 3. Yeah, and then I've got a linear system. I'm looking in the linear system N times A at some guy H, which is base point free, which is uh, uh, no fixed part, but uh, base, uh, base point P with multiplicity greater than N. Right, so I've got this linear system H here, look, looks, sort of looks like this. Right, and he's got this fixed, this P point P as a fixed point. Okay, but now we're just doing insection number on, of curves on the surface, and so the uh, the local insection of the local self insection of H with H at uh, H with another element in the linear system H here at the point P must be bigger than this multiplicity squared times the degree of. So let, let me call this M multiplicity greater than M. So the uh, the local the local self-intersection of self-intersection of H at P is certainly greater than uh, is 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 greater than or equal to m squared times the degree of P. Right? But the global self-intersection of the linear system is only three times n squared. Right, so 3 times n squared greater than or equal to m squared times the degree of p. Right, and m is bigger than n. Yeah, so, so only one or two is possible. So that means if, if, if something, if this, if this linear system really exists, then it's, um, 
it, it's giving me a bad singularity, and a bad, and a bad singularity has to be either at a single point or a pair of conjugate points. That's the only, uh, that's the only possibility. Right? And so we need to untwist. an irreducible, a geometrically irreducible point or uh, a, a point of uh, degree 2 which means uh, two geometrically irreducible points that are conjugate over the field K, right? And, uh, you know, here is how we do the first case, P. So I, th there is, a, there is a, a schematic picture of a birational involution. So, so in the first case, the first case corresponds to so it's got different names, but it, quadratic involution is the thing that I've described. And it also corresponds to geyser involution in the context of plane Cremona group. So, so let me just say what it is. So given this picture... Suppose P is the point zero 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 one, so call it call him P T. Let, let me call these coordinates X Y Z T. So the surface S is contained contains P T and is non singular there. And so this means that uh, this guy this guy T here. T cubed cannot appear. T cubed doesn't appear. And then T squared times X does appear. Right? So the surface, the surface has got to... This, every monomial appearing in the equation of the surface S must uh, have a T... t to the power less than t, 2, and 1 must appear with exactly power to 2, and I'm just calling him t. Right? So I'm just saying, here is the surface, here is the tangent space to the, to the point p, and I can take this, the tangent space is given locally by x equals some function of the others. Right? And then this, uh, this the quadratic involution I told you about earlier, well, I'm just writing, uh, I'm writing x t squared plus a t plus b. So this is now 2 and 3. And I can, uh, I can replace t. I can, I can exclude t and introduce x t instead. So then I get x t all squared plus a x t plus b 3 t. Right? So this makes makes uh, S blown up at P into a, to a, double, to a double cover. Branched in the quartic um, so the quart what's the quartic uh, um, a1 squared minus 4b. That's not what I meant to say. It was right first time. Sorry.
Yes. And so, uh, you know, I mean, this is just the argument I used before. Geometrically speaking, what I'm doing is I'm projecting from P, and I'm saying because I'm projecting from P, therefore, I, therefore there's a birational involution. If you want to see that birational involution as a biregular involution, you go through the business I said there. That involves blowing up the point P, thinking of, the, that, thinking of that variety as a double cover over a, over a curve which is, uh, uh, which is given by this. <coughs> and, then, uh, and then that one's got a biregular involution. Biregular involution removes, takes the blown up curve here to some completely different curve and then contracts, contracts the reflection of, of this P. So, so this means this, I mean, I'm just saying something obvious. It's S1 goes there, and now this is a, a double cover of P2. And this is, um, so to some surface here, which is Z, double cover of P2. And then I just reflect and then just follow the track back. So that gives me, that gives me a birational map that blows up this point P, this is a birational map S to S, right? It blows up the point P and it takes it to some new curve in S and it contracts some, it, it contracts the, um, I'm not quite sure what it contracts, I think you can easily work it out from this. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the quadratic involution. And then there's an argument that says if a linear system H on S has point P as a point of multiplicity. So this, is, this H is in N times A, multiplicity M greater than N, then this, um, so, so this defines this I sub P. By rational involution, which is just, I mean, this is the geometrically very simple thing, the linear projection from a point, and then considering it's a double cover, then IP, then if I do this, IP to the minus one lower star of H, right, this is uh, in uh, N prime day with N primed strictly less than N. So I think, I, think, I think it's something like 2n minus m. Anyway, you know, this, this is... Uh, so, so, you know, our, our, our book gives a, a derivation of this where, where you don't have to calculate this number, where you can just prove by some kind of a junction theory that uh, the multiplicity decreases. Right, so, so that's what untwisting means. It means I can, I can pre-multiply by one of a given involution that comes out necessarily out of the point P and that decreases the degree of the whole linear system. Right. And then the, the more complicated one is uh, uh, degree P equals 2 is trickier. It's trickier in the same way that del pezzo surfaces of degree 1 are more tricky than del pezzo surfaces of degree 2. So what we're supposed to do is, here's, here's the picture. So this is again a cubic surface, and I've got these two points. Or I've got these, sorry, two conjugate points. So here's my point P. So it's uh, P1 plus P2 conjugate. Yeah. So if we blow, if we if we blow up those the, if we blow up those two conjugate points, if we blow up that irreducible subscheme P, right? Then, so I do S to S one, and this is now del pezzo of degree one. Right, and so and then so that then Q is a base point 
of minus k s1 right and every curve in minus k s1 is an elliptic curve with p as origin so again uh, again, the uh, you know better the best way of thinking about this is uh, so you know you may be thinking that this picture and that picture over there are quite similar, right? In fact, they're they're really very very different indeed. So so here the involution involution here uh, fixes Q. Right. Whereas the involution here takes P and it blasts it all over the place. Yes? So, so this S1 can be, can be written as, this S1 has uh, this S1 is, is isomorphic to uh, degree 6 surface, S1 of degree 6 in weighted projective space 1, 1, 2, 3. Right? And so again, this is now, if I call this one x1, x2, y, z, without any relation to the previous x1, x2. Well, x1, x2 is still, is still the linear system of pencils, the, the, the linear pencil of hyperplanes passing through this straight line with this point Q as a base, a base point. Then this will be z squared plus something right so this is now this is now monic quadratic in z right and so the s1 has a biregular involution yes so <coughs> So, so again, and, and we find again that if I do, if I, if I take H in N A, then uh, and I untwist by this. So, 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 so let's be clear. I go S goes to S one. This one here is. This one here, uh, this one is isomorphic to this one six in P one one two three, and this has this this by regular by th because this one is monic quadratic in variable z. This has a this has a by regular involution. So I by regular involution here translates back to a by rational involution here. So there's an IP here. Right? And I had a linear system which has a very bad singularity at these two points. And so I blow up those points, put them out somewhere, contract something else down. But the effect of blowing up these points in the first place uh, decreases the degree of the linear system very substantially. So this un untwist this by IP. This is the, the Bertini evolution. decreases the degree. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm not saying this very precisely. The, uh, the, this introductory chapter to our, to our book is written in a very precise way, but it takes a little bit more time than I have to uh, explain it properly. I think I'll, is it all right to leave it at this? <laughs> I, if I try to explain any more, I'll get yeah, bogged down in difficulties. I think I'll just leave it at this.